Okay, let's solve this basic algebra equation. And I'm actually going to solve this two different ways, and I'm going to give you uh, what I'm going to um, suggest as the better way. But we'll go through both techniques here. But um, let's just briefly review. When you're solving equations in algebra, the basic idea is you want to move all your variable terms to the left and all your numbers over to the right. So we're going to have to address this variable term. We want to get this over here linked up with this other variable term. And then we have this 3. We're going to want to move that over here and kind of uh, get it connected with this negative 1. So we can get all our variables to the left, all our numbers to the right, and then we can kind of uh, go from there and finally solve the equation. So this is basic algebra. And uh, of course, uh, we are dealing with fractions, everyone's favorite topics. No need to be intimidated by fractions. I'm going to give you some uh, suggestions on how to deal with them. Uh, but we're going to, again, do this equation uh, using uh, two different approaches. Okay, um, And there is one approach that is the better approach. But I'm going to get to all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And you can find the link to my math help program in the description of this video. But very uh, quickly, I have about 100 plus different math courses. I specialize uh, in obviously middle school, high school, and even college level math. So you'll find my courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything else in between. If you are taking any kind of test that has math on it, so for example, uh, like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACE, or CLEP exam, you get the idea, teacher certification exam. If you're taking any exam with math, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass. If you homeschool, I have very comprehensive homeschool math curriculum. And then if you don't have any math notes, you can use my math notes. I'm gonna leave links uh, to my math notes in the description of this video. But hopefully you don't need my math notes because you should be taking fantastic math notes. That is really the key to success. I've been teaching math for decades, and really those students who take great math notes always end up with these grades that look like this at the end of the year. Okay, so if you're not taking great notes, start taking notes and you'll thank me later. Okay, so here we go. Here is the problem. Let me uh, kind of erase this, and if you want to try this on your own, I think that would be a good uh, use of this video. But again, I'm going to um, approach this in two different ways. I'm going to start off uh, by kind of the way that I would not suggest you approach this problem. Nevertheless, it's a good way to look at, um, we're going to re uh, review some things here because it's still something that you need to know. Okay, so there's going to be two ways we can approach this particular equation. So let's get right to it. And um, again, kind of already pre-wrote all the workout. Uh, remember the big picture, and the big picture is we want to move, get all our variables on the left, all our numbers on the right. So let's go ahead and start with moving our numbers around. So I have this three, it's on the left-hand side. Again, I wanna move this on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna subtract three away. Now, if this equation uh, is a little bit, you know, kind of advanced for where you're at in algebra, you might wanna uh, check out more of my basic um, uh, equations in my pre-algebra playlist or my pre-algebra uh, math course. But uh, you'll want to start off mastering one-step equations, and of course, you'll need to know something about fractions. If you look into my pre-algebra um, playlist on my YouTube channel, I have tons of videos on this if you uh, need to review any of this stuff. All right, so here I have 1 half m plus 3. I'm like, okay, i got to get this 3 over to the right-hand side so I can just subtract 3 away here. And you want to write this just as I'm doing this, uh, as I'm writing it. There's other... Uh, kind of format that you can use, but this is the best format. Okay, so just basically kind of try to model the work that I'm doing. Now I'm going to subtract three from both sides of the equation, and then you kind of add down in a column manner. Okay, so it's one half m plus nothing is one half m. Okay, that's what I want. And then a positive three minus three is zero. That goes away, and that's what I wanted. I just wanted this variable term on the left. Then I have 2 thirds m plus nothing is 2 thirds m, and negative 1 plus a negative 3 is negative 4. Okay, so uh, at this stage of the game, we have all our numbers to the right. That's what I wanted. But now I have to address moving this variable term over to the left-hand side. So at this point, we get to kind of play around with fractions. I know everyone's excited about that. So how do I get this over here? Well, I need to subtract it away. So I can subtract 
negative two-thirds m from this side, but remember in algebra, in equations, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing on the other. So over here, I'm going to write negative two-thirds m, and this will effectively move this uh, variable term to the left, and that's what I want. Okay, I got all my numbers to the right, got to get all my variables to the left. All right, so now I got to figure out, notes let me go down here so I can show you better. I got to figure out what uh, one half m plus a negative two thirds m is going to be equal to. Okay, now you can see I have the answer, it's negative one uh, six m. And then on the right hand side, two thirds m minus two, uh, a positive two thirds m minus two thirds m is zero and I just have my negative four. But let's go back to this fraction here. So I got to figure out what one half minus two thirds is. And you can kind of see I have that work here. So for those of you out there that are, uh, you know, uh, not great fans of fractions, you would have to do what? Well, you're gonna have to find the LCD, which is not that difficult, is six, or you wanna um, use another technique, which I call the bow tie technique either way, um, you need to be able to get the answer here. Now, again, if you're struggling with fractions or just, you know, a little shaky on it, I have great videos on this in my um, pre-algebra um, uh, playlist on my YouTube channel. Matter of fact, some of my top videos, uh, at least at the time of this um, particular video, I mean, literally, I have millions of views on, on uh, people that need to review fractions. So don't uh, feel shy. A lot of people, <laughs> you know, struggle with it. And it's because we don't deal with fractions all the time, you know, in elementary school, but in algebra, you still need to know them. All right, so let's move on here. So you can see, when you do this fraction problem, you're gonna have, you gotta be very careful of the signs here, okay? This is going to be negative, so it's gonna be three minus four, so that's a negative one over six. Be very, very careful of the signs. So this is where we're at. So we're almost there, uh, but to solve for m, I need to do what? Well, you need to, let's just look at a more basic equation. Let's say I had 2m is equal to 8. That's just a one-step equation. To solve for m, I would divide both sides of the equation by 2. Okay, so here, uh, most students are probably going to think, of, okay, i got to divide both sides of the equation by negative 1, 6. Okay, now again, I'm going to do this equation using another technique. Okay, or another approach, but let's go ahead and continue to uh, take this last step. So negative one six m is equal to negative four. I'm dividing both sides of the equation by negative one six. This will give me m. Okay, my solution. So we have to now interpret what we call this. This is a complex fraction. I got all all kinds of stuff going on here, but this is saying negative four. That little fraction bar is division. I'm dividing by this fraction here. So this is negative 4 divided by negative 1, 6. It's better to write it out this way to see what's going on. Negative 4 divided by negative 1, 6. All right, let's continue on. So m is going to be negative 4. When you're dividing fractions, it becomes multiplication. So I need to flip this around. That becomes negative 6 over 1 or just negative 6, and this becomes multiplication. Negative 4 times negative 6 is 24. Our answer is m is equal to 24, positive 24. And if you got this uh, correct, I must give you a nice happy face with an A+, plus, a little mohawk, and a few little stars to make you feel extra special. Nice job. You know, now, if you took a different approach, that's fine. As long as you got this as your answer, that's what counts, okay? Now, this is one approach. Now, some of you might be, you know, uh, uh, inclined to work this equation using this method, but there's a better way. Okay, so let's go to the second way to do this problem. Now, the best way to do um, solve equations or deal with fractions in algebra, especially equations, is to clear the equations right off the bat. Okay, so there's no need to kind of hassle, I'm sorry, uh, to clear the fractions right off the bat. Okay, so when you have uh, an equation with fractions, or other kind of expressions, uh, particularly equations, you can use the lowest common denominator of all the fractions here to clear, the, clear it away. So what's the LCD? Well, I have this fraction, that's 2. I have this other fraction, this is 3. So what's the lowest common, nom common denominator of 2 and 3? It's 6. So if I take 6 and I multiply this entire equation by 6, you're not going to break the equation. Remember, in algebra, if I have an equation, whatever I do to one side of this equation, if I do the exact same, same thing to the other side, you do not change, you know, you make it look different, 
but it's a mathematically equivalent. So don't be, be shy for doing, you know, uh, taking a step like this, changing the values because you're not really breaking the equation. So I'm going to take this six. I'm going to multiply it by every single term. Okay. All right. We have to do that. But by doing that, I'm going to get rid of these fractions. So let's just go ahead and take this one step at a time. All right, so 6 times 1 half, that's 3, right? So again, just a quick review of fractions. Uh, that's going to be 6 over 1 times 1 half. So 2 goes into 6. That is going to be 3. So again, if you don't know how to deal with fractions, you need to review this, but not that difficult. So 6 times 1 half, M, 3M. 6 times 3 18, you can see the answers down here, okay? 6 times 2 thirds M, all right? So that's going to be 6 over 1 times 2 thirds. So 3 goes into 6, 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So that would be 4M. Then lastly, I have 6 times this negative 1, which is negative 6. Okay, so at, this is much, much better at the, uh, to deal with, okay? You just took this one step uh, to get rid of all these fractions, and now we can just pick up the problem right here. OK, and you're still going to want to get all your variables to the left, all your numbers to the right. So let's start uh, working on this. We'll move this 4M over to the left. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to subtract 4M from both sides of the equation. Let me scroll down here. All right. So again, when you do that, you're going to add down in a column manner. So 3M plus a negative 4M is negative 1M or just negative M. OK, remember, there's a 1 right there. But we just write that as a negative m. So 18 plus nothing is 18. 4m minus 4m is 0. That's what I wanted. I want all my variables to the left. And the negative 6 plus nothing is a negative 6. OK, so now I got all my variables to the left. Now let's move <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, all my numbers to the right. So I got this positive 18. Let's subtract 18 from both sides of the equation. And when I do that, I'm going to add it down now. I have negative m, okay, plus nothing is negative m. Positive 18 minus 18 is 0. And I have negative 6 plus a negative 18. you got to really know your positive negative numbers here, okay? That's negative 24. And so I have negative m is equal to negative 24. The answer is m is equal to 24. But let's look at this a little bit more carefully just so there's no confusion. Negative m is equal to negative 24. Remember, Technically, you have a negative 1 there, negative 1m. That's that negative m. That's what that means. So what you're really doing is you're dividing both sides of the equation by negative 1 to get a positive m. Negative divided by negative is positive. That's positive 24. Okay, just wanted to make sure there was no confusion why this is equal to that. All right, so there you go. We did this equation both ways. It's a pretty basic algebra, but, you know, um, Basic if you understand how to deal with fractions, if you understand how to deal with positive and negative numbers, if you understand principles of solving equations, you know, having all your variables to the left, all your numbers to the right, and how to take those steps. So, you know, I use that, um, you know, description basic kind of loosely because if you're learning this for the first time, this could be kind of difficult, all right? But uh, this is certainly, you know, the kind of math that you're going to be facing in pre-algebra, algebra one, any kind of algebra class. So you can definitely do this. Figure out what skills that are troubling you. Okay, if it's fractions, if it's dealing with positive and negative numbers, all those different things I can help you out with on my YouTube channel or maybe my math course. But if this video was helpful in some small degree, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And again, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics. I have a ton of stuff that can help you um, with anything that you might be having difficulty on this you know, on my YouTube channel, like positive, negative numbers, fractions, etc. So don't be uh, shy to review these things, okay? And especially if you're kind of not sure you know them that well, you must go back and strengthen your skills on that. It's going to make your algebra. Um, you know, uh, ability to do these problems much, much better. But uh, my best math help will always be within my math help program. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.